Well, what's up? We are, uh, I guess we're headed to to the Wichita River. Is it called the Wich Wichita River? Louisiana for the national championship for the crappie masters. Very excited. It's going to be a good time. Uh, it's quite a long drive for me. Actually, it's roughly eight hours of a drive. So for these eight hours, I get to reflect on what I'm going to plan on doing and think about what I'm going to be doing in a, a lake or a river that I've never been to. Now, the way I understand it, and of course, we'll get some clarification later today when we get there. Um, there's a lot of lakes that have come right off the river. And so, you know, I've done my, I've done my homework. I've done my homework and uh, I've gone on to YouTube. I'm sure a lot of people do the same thing to investigate Lake of Egypt and some of these lakes I fish. Um, and I watched dang it, every video I could find on the Wichita River. And uh, I feel like I've got some lakes that I'm gonna be definitely investigating. White's Lakes, Moon Lake, Horseshoe. Um, and then I think, I don't know if I'll have time to pre, I, never being here, it just takes time to pre-fish. So um, I think if I can just investigate Moon, White, Horseshoe in that area, I think that's gonna be enough enough for me to uh, investigate for this tournament. So the tournament starts in a couple days, two to three, two to three days, three days and, uh, we're gonna try to put together a plan of attack. But we're single pulling, we're doing this solo. We've got eight hours to reflect on this tournament, to think about what our plan is, to put us in a state of mind that is, uh, you know, a good state of mind. So I always go into these tournaments with uh, a lot of excitement, um, definitely some nervousness, just because, um, you know, you just don't know anything about it. But I'm confident in the ability to fish. It's just a question of whether or not I can find what I need to find in time. You can always find fish, but it's a different, different quality fish we're looking for. We're looking for tournament fish, and uh, that's that's the tough thing. So this will be the very first time on the uh, Wichita River. It looks like it's roughly. I think it, I heard somewhere one of those videos, 600 miles of river, and it just seems like there's a ton of lakes that come off the off of it so we're gonna try to hit an area that's gonna be a lot of lakes so that we have options during the tournament and we'll probably spend those all those pre-fish days in those areas so anyway it's uh, always interesting going to a tournament and uh... thanks for watching three pound fishing partnered up with these fantastic companies all right we just arrived in monroe that is seven and a half almost eight hours of driving it's a lot of driving. But one thing that's positive, I've already picked up on it. Gas prices here are only $1.69. $1.69. That's like, it's unheard of. In Illinois right now, it is like $2.50. $2.50. Yes, we get screwed in Illinois. I get it. Get the heck out of Illinois. I get it. Unfortunately, that's not how life works. But uh, down here in Monroe, they got it going on. $1.69. That's not a bad price. But... We're almost at the boat ramp. We need to get on the water. Woo! Number one thing accomplished. We got here safely. We're at the boat ramp, Moon Lake. The uh, first impressions of the town, I like it. Now the important thing is uh, after eight hours of driving, I'm so excited about getting out the water and fishing. I don't want to screw anything up. Sometimes I tend to get into a rush. Uh, forget a simple thing like putting a plug in your boat or something like that. The moon lake. Let's put some slabs in the boat, shall we? Gosh, I have to admit, it's, it's exciting to be here. <laughs> I, you know, never been on the lake before whatsoever. The river, Wachita River. And uh, I didn't think I'd be this excited about coming to a new place, but it is the national championship and this is a new body of water and so it's just exciting to see what you can learn. So, uh, who knows, I might just get hung up here real quick. Who, who, who freaking knows? But uh, we're gonna explore and find White Lake and then Horseshoe Lake. That's my goal right now because we can then start there and work our way back. And tomorrow we have a half a day. So this video is all gonna be about pre-fishing for this tournament and then we'll do two episodes for the tournament itself so that's my goal is 
three total episodes. This will be number one, then we'll go right into the tournament. So this is the pre-fish for the national championship of the Crappie Masters. Very excited. So the, so the minute I get out there on the water, it starts to come down. Now let me tell you, Monroe had a forecast that it's going to rain all the way up to the tournament time. So it's amazing how much water we are going to get. But I can tell you this, the plan is actually going to do two pre-fish videos and then two videos for the tournament. So this is pre-fish video one, and boy, do we put some slabs in the boat. You stay tuned here. We're going to put some big fish in the boat on this episode. And it's just funny how the rain just seemed to come harder and harder. <laughs> as I just got in the water. So folks, I'm telling you, it went from being okay to being absolutely pelting me with rain. Oh my gosh, that's our first, that's our, that's our first Wachita freaking pig flipped in the boat by a 13 foot, three pound fishing rod. That is a freaking hog. Let's weigh that bad dog. That's unbelievable. First fish. <laughs> I haven't been out here but 20 minutes. A two. 25, a 225 for the first fish I've caught here. That's freaking awesome. Unreal. All right, so we're gonna let this guy go. We're not keeping any fish, of course. We're just learning the lake. So we're, we talk about, right now we're trying to find locations, but also bait. So they're chomping on the small little hair jig. They are chomping on the hair jig. <laughs> that is a freaking hammer. Good night. Look at that sucker. Two pounds. Wow. All right, I just entered Horseshoe Lake. Kind of sketchy. Ain't gonna lie. Not sure how I feel about it. Feel about it. So we're gonna investigate this so that we know what we're gonna do in the morning, basically. So it's very apparent that the camera is not giving you the visual that I was having. It was a lot darker out, and a camera allows you to see, it sees a lot more light, so it doesn't appear to be dark. But actually, we were right on the edge of that time where I needed to put my navigational light. So me coming in here at this time of day, not knowing the lake at all, was really kind of weird. But a Horseshoe Lake is very, very pretty. Um, and I went during the day as well. You'll see that in a later episode, but very interesting first day. All right, for we are day two here. We've only got four hours to fish today for the Crappie Masters, and uh, unfortunately, we have got some nastiness going on here. I don't know if you can pick up on that, but crazy amount of rain. And I'm just kind of waiting, not necessarily for it to stop, but at least to slow down. It just, it just continues to get, it gets harder as I sit here. It just keeps getting harder. And uh, I'm diehard. You guys all know I'm diehard. But with rain, it's a little different. And visibility out here is really bad. It's like a fog has rolled in along with this rain. So I'm just sitting in the parking lot. Day two here, pre-fish. And uh, I don't know if I'll get the fish today or not. Hopefully I will. But at the end of the day, I just sit here and tell it feels like the rain has kind of i won't say stopped because i do not think it's going to stop by noon uh, but at least get to a point where i feel comfortable running around the lake and the safety is paramount when you're fishing alone so i see other boats they're not going in either everybody's just sitting in the parking lot there's about th at this point only three other boats because nobody's even venturing to the boat ramps because of all this rain but it's rained six inches since i got off the water yesterday last night 
to to now and uh it's an unbelievable amount of rain it just it just keeps going i don't know if this is re re part of that hurricane that had come through or whatnot but um it won't stop all right i'm going in i don't care i can't wait it's raining like a mofo that should be the, the name of this video if we were doing a video just on this particular day but this is crazy but i'm going in because i gotta find the details on a couple lakes and so that's what you gotta do i'll send you some i'll show you some pictures of what i did let me tell you it never stopped raining but i did catch some good fish this is a two pounder that i caught i just couldn't keep the camera running it just was raining constantly never stopped never gave in so basically the pre-fish on day two was kind of a wash to be honest with you but i got a surprise for you me and my buddy dave johnson we went and saw a friend of mine and that's coming up here now so uh i figured uh we're gonna go meet a good friend of mine and while we're here in monroe louisiana so, uh, we're almost here. Hey, hey, you made it, you made it. <laughs> How you doing, bud? Good, good. You doing good. Don't come on in and get out of the rain. You did it, dad, you made it. So is this where you guys actually make? This the... is where we make them, right? Wow. Yep. Come on in here. There's Anna. She's our best worker. That's Phil's oldest granddaughter. There's Taylor. He's our best worker. Positive <laughs> So, so I'm not a big duck duck hunting guy. I'm just not. Never. I, I couldn't get. Every time I go to Rin Lake, we the we would never have. No, no. We every time we'd go, we'd never shoot any ducks. It was like I'd get up at four o'clock in the morning. They do the little ping pong ball draw to get a blind. Okay. And then we would we never had that much success, really? and so after about four or five of them, I just cut, decided that probably wasn't for me in terms of getting up early. I mean, I was getting up really early. Well, that. you need to go to a different spot. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. Some of the stuff we we make we make it all here. Um, this is uh, let's see, That's a tail. This is the wooden call. This is where everything except for like the specialty calls, the teal, the woody, the mallard drake. Um, everything, all the mallard hen calls come off as wood call because uh, it's, wood has its own characteristic, you know, and we have to file it. Right. And I got a piece in there I'll show you in a minute. And you'll file it and you blow it to make sure it sounds right because Phil says don't sell it till you'll hunt with it. So that's what we do. So you file it, you test it, you file it, you test it, you file Oh, I misled you. I learned this. And you right. put it together and, whoa, <laughs> what a sound, a higher pitch. Right. Or more raspy. Right. So then you send that to the plastic molders and they send you a sample back and it's either great or didn't turn out. Gotcha. And uh, if it's great, then we got a new duck call. It's a higher pitch one for uh, windy days and loud, some of them will get loud, you know, stuff like that. So that's where he comes, the new duck calls all come off the of wood. We got something for everybody, but we're the working man's call. We ain't, we do have some high dollar calls, but mostly it's just, you know, by the working man. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm Matt, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Jay Stone. But, uh, this is where it happens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of dirty in here, but uh, that's where it happens. We've been busy. I thought he had you. And I was a vacuum cleaner. Oh, yeah, I've been watching you. <laughs> <laughs> is that really? Come on now. What I, are you doing? I have. That's the summer bite. I, I thought you were a screensaver there for a minute. I thought, man, we're getting a little awkward here. No, <laughs> I just got it on pause. But this is the wooden call. This is the trough. And the soundboard is, uh, that's where all the sound comes from. But you'd have to, like I was saying, you got to file it. Right. And then you test it and send that and you get this in. Let's let them build a call, Jay. A couple of them. Oh, I reckon we can do that. A couple of them. Uh, so if you, if you were to, so you would start with this, make a new sound, and then you would send this off to a plastic the plastic molder. And then they would they make it just like that. that. And then you can say whether it's a winner or a loser, basically. Yeah, that, that call is called DC 200 Classic Commander. 
Okay. First one Phil made. So when we build them, that none of them are the same. Right. You got to file. Right. You got to cut them. Right. So you'll blow one, and, and it is good night with well, that. That's got a uh, got a sound to it. And then, in this case, this trough right here come off that call that DC two hundred. It's the best trough ever. It, it was a it wasn't it was unlike any other trough to come out of DC two hundred. Super easy to blow. It got a lot of duck in it. Yeah. And that's how we came up with the new calls early on. Right. And then he cut the tone board. He goes, well, let's cut it down and see what happens. Cut it. It made a totally different sound. So some people like to grunt in their calls. Some people don't grunt. Some people tight lip it. Right. Some people change it. You got changers, grunters, hard <laughs> blowers, soft blowers. <laughs> You know, everybody's different. Right. And everybody thinks their way is, is the right way. Not the case. Whatever it takes to make it sound like a duck, no matter how you do it. But everybody yeah. blows a duck call different. So we try to have enough duck calls for every type blower. Gotcha. That it also affordable. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't do yuppie calls. <laughs> <laughs> you see them break back Gertrude's calls? They're like a crappie jig hanging hey, around <laughs> Okay. You take a ring, I'm gonna just show you briefly, and you place it on here. We've already got them the right length. And then you take this, you take this and put it on here all the way down to the bottom. You notice it's got a cut in it. Mm -hmm. You put that cut toward the inside. And also that pin is more toward the front. So the cut's up here. Right. Yep, gotcha. Yep, you need to turn that around. I don't I wasn't listening to it. Heck, I wasn't even going to put it in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, this is my part of testing it. You're going to have to test it once you build it. There you go. And you know, you push it about halfway. Put the thing down. Yeah. You can do it about halfway. You'll get these marks and that mark, that red and that. <laughs> so that's a callus for doing that? Yeah, and then pulling them apart, you'll get them. So you're always doing this? Yeah. How hard do you do that? About, I do it about halfway. We got a press when, I don't think. Like it. It's too so you still sit and build duck calls every day? Five hundred days a week. Now you gotta blow it to make, see if it works. Wh which side do you blow it? <laughs> oh, it is that side? No. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, you got 999 more. There you go. This is what it sounds like. How come it sounds so much more like a duck? <laughs> <laughs> How often do you go duck hunting? Every day. New token. Really? Size quiet in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey man, we appreciate you. Hey, thanks for coming Seriously. by. Good luck to y'all. Do not miss a fish. May you not miss a fish. How do you how do you make the promise to that guy? You can't do that. No way. Can't happen. I know, I know I'm going to miss some fish. I practiced today. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I we practiced missing them. We appreciate yeah. you. Good so, luck. Thanks again.